I used to do it. When I know there's that pressure, I just go on autopilot. Yeah. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Raw Alternative Relaunch, here from our new home, Despot Media. I'm your host, Rick Polo. For those of you who may not know, the Raw Alternative began as a college radio show back in 2011, featuring underground artists and keeping you connected to the scene here in Northeast Ohio. Over the years, we eventually expanded into an online magazine and blog and kept a strong social media presence ever since. Now, from our new home here at Despot Media, we're proud to bring you exclusive interviews, live performances, and a few surprises along the way. Keep it locked here at The Raw Alternative. <laughs> For over two decades, our first guests have been performing and releasing music with a now vast catalog under their belt. Coming off of 2018's introspective poem idea and last year's nostalgic reprise EP, our first guests show no signs of slowing down. The Raw Alternative is honored to welcome our very first guest, Third Class. How you been? Awesome, man. Thank you so much for having us. We've been doing great. Yeah, pretty good. Nice. My absolute pleasure. So um, let's cut right to it. We are coming off of one of the strangest years in probably all of our lives. Um, but you, third class, that is, have remained active, really, for the most part. And you've launched sort of a, a really interesting fan direct campaign involving your next record. Uh, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so we um, unfortunately couldn't play the shows that it usually requires to maybe save up for studio time. And we had a lot of really good ideas and some great songs that we were hoping to get out into the world. So we created a GoFundMe and everybody had been so um, unbelievably generous to, to then help us get that done. It was almost like they were filling in for the shows or events they might have gone to throughout the year, which we know is hard because a lot of people, unfortunately, are without because of the pandemic. Right. How would you say, speaking to sort of that direct fan interaction and kind of cutting out the middleman in a lot of ways, how, how did that work for you? And how do you think that'll play into, you know, do you think this is something you might do moving forward? Probably not. Um, it's been amazing. It wasn't because of any lack of enthusiasm, but we try to do this as little as possible. Mm -hmm. As far as being direct with the fans, we'll always do that. Right. But um I don't foresee us opening another GoFundMe or doing another fundraiser if we don't have to. This was out of like somewhat necessity. I realize music isn't maybe the necessity, but it is. And like, and like, so, but we were pretty hesitant to go through it with it. And it was really overwhelmingly kind that people were okay with that. Right. So we're trying not to do it again for a lot of years if we can. <laughs> uh, I, makes sense. Well, I see a lot more art artists sort of using Patreon and things like that where, you know, um, different tiers, um, you know, you get exclusive merch, uh, first dibs on, you know, new music and what have you. But is that anything you think you would be interested in in the future? We have a Patreon and we've kind of done like dry runs of like, um, like we're going to write you a poem for a dollar and like fun things like that. Or okay. like if you pay the monthly Patreon, we'll give you our demos, but and, and maybe I'll eat my words later, but even the Beatles, I'm kind of like, that's enough with the remastering and the, and the demos of demos and all, even with yeah, that, I'm like, I don't want to really put all that stuff out. <laughs> We're lucky enough to be putting stuff out already, so it's bonus materials we got plenty of, but I don't know how quality it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? That speaks to, you know, oversaturation. <laughs> right. uh, you feel that's something maybe a lot of artists, sort of like an easy cash grab, you know? 
Yeah, and and honestly, for us, we just had some the best songs we had written, and we were like, "This is the reason." And I think with long term fans, they were like, "We're gonna give you this. We don't expect anything in return." And that was like crazily generous. They were, they were like, "We're gonna help you do this. We know there should be another third class album," and that was amazing in itself. So I think maybe we'll mess with those subscriptions and stuff here and there, but I don't know. I don't know. I think we're just like we did it. We did it. Okay. Good for now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Great. So as previously mentioned, the entity that is third class has existed now for, you know, two decades and running. And when you and I first um, spoke, uh, released a review for your reprise EP, which was, you know, sort of this fun, nostalgic kind of revisiting and it was kind of fun for me because, you know, I got to go back and there's some some material of yours that I hadn't heard because you, you have a lot out, you know, over the years. And there was um, some material I actually did, never heard that I got to go back and you might have done one cut from that record. But, you know, it, for the review to make sense, I have to listen to the whole record for yeah. context. So what kind of led you to do that uh, little EP? Yeah, I mean, we we do have we've been doing this for so long that we have so much material, and uh, you know, we, when we think back at old albums or even cassettes of, you know, collections of songs, there's always like one or two songs that like stick in our heads uh, that we always want to revisit and find some creative new way to like, you know, present it to people again without it being like, you know, tired or something that they've heard a million times. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we we I've had a couple of friends kind of more or less imply, are you guys doing like classic third class with this album? I'm like, <laughs> we already did that. We're not gonna make that same album again. So we do tr- strive to to move forward. And, you know, we did it already. We're gonna do something new there. So that's the point of the reprise EP and this album for sure. Like we gotta do something new. Right. Yeah. What well, kind of speaks to your evolution as? I guess you can say as an artist and both people that, you know, you're constantly looking forward, but with, with so many, with such a catalog under your belt already, uh, does it seem like there are moments where you're like, you know, I, I remember that guy. I remember who I was when I wrote that. And it takes on maybe the same, but at the same time, a new fresh meaning for you when you revisit these. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, everybody changes a lot as you get older. And, um, you know, we were angsty teens like anybody else when we started writing music. And, you know, uh, so that has definitely changed. And definitely, you know, uh, songs that we wrote as angsty teens, yeah, like you said, have a different meaning to us now. Um, so being, you know, when we do revisit things or even when we just play live shows and we play songs that we wrote when we were 15, you know, it just feels very different to us when we play those songs. So do you feel it keeps it fresh for fans who have been following you for so long that, you know, if you have maybe a a little bit of a alternate slash updated arrangement of an old song that everyone's heard, you know, 500 times, I mean, that's got to be exciting for you, I'd imagine, to kind of chop and splice things up. I don't know if you ever heard, there's a lot of quotes out there about people who write the same song their whole lives. Mm-hmm. I subscribe to that. I think we have about three or four heavy themes we always hit. And like life, death, childhood, love, et cetera, et cetera. So it's good to try to at least find new ways to say it. <laughs> right. Well, it's interesting, though, because at least in my mind, uh, the last two records... Virginia's playlist and poem idea have struck me as being sort of very introspective, a bit more so than the previous material. So do you feel at this point in the evolution that has kind of been the natural conclusion? For those albums, yes, but we're back We're back with a bit more, um, we're going to rock more and tr- have a lot more trippy moments on these upcoming releases to 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 clarify we're actually going to release a seven song ep called my old gods to kind of precurse and then the out 13 song album haunted until the very end which will be that one we know for sure will be october 3rd 
Um, so both those are actually going to trip out a little more than our usual stuff. To, to answer your question directly, yes, introspective is the direction still, but it's not going to have the folky thing as much. It's not going to have like the balladry so much. It's going to be more like it's going to hit a little harder, which will be kind of fun. Absolutely, yeah. I believe you were saying three years since you've played actually in your home base here in Northeast Ohio. So what was it like coming back to the stage? Um, in our minds leading up to it, it wasn't going to be weird at all. And then it was, <laughs> um, you know, we've been playing live shows for so long that in our heads we were like, Oh, it's going to be fine. It's going to feel like, you know, nothing ever changed about a week before the show. Lee texted me and he was like, I'm actually really nervous. And I was like, what are you nervous about? There's nothing to be nervous about. We've done this a million times. And then like the day of the show, I, I caught up to him and I was like, I'm really nervous. Um, and it, you know, it felt strange standing on a stage again in front of people after just, you know, a couple short, long, very long years actually. Um, but uh, I don't know, I feel like a few songs in it just, we sunk right back into it, so. I mean, it, it, yeah, it was one of my favorite shows, We, you know, but when, very well so that felt good I think we consider ourselves songwriters first and foremost so that a live show can go well is always so nice for us because we we're not the most um uh, I can't think of the word we're not the most traditional musicians so we're always a little like do we fit in here no this is awesome man these people are amazing the crowd was so cool the venue you know it was it was the best it was so much fun to quote the, our member Jack who's unfortunately not here today dude, we're like the Beatles when they stopped touring, except without the success. Like, wow, man, I can't believe we were able to do this fundraiser and still like write these songs. So when you say time off, yeah, there were there was like a year and a half that was like time off for sure, but we've been writing the whole time and that's our 100% strong point. Like that's my sweet spot in life, <laughs> you know? But we, for the first time ever, were writing while we weren't playing live. We are not the type of band that writes on tour. We are not the type of band that jams, so... Oh man, we were lucky to like, and we didn't really do much of it in the same room. We sent, this is, we're finally in a technological era where we could send back and forth and actually develop the songs, which was crazy. You had, I mean, I know you're doing this interview with us and stuff, but you, you certainly showed resiliency in that too, with the heck vector stuff and all that raw alternative stuff that you're doing now, no well, doubt. I appreciate a lot of that. that. Yeah. I mean, you know, not to like, I know you're on your own show here but i just want to plug you for a second and saying like yeah man this it's kind of like this whole thing that we're doing now came out of that too which is amazing i do want to say shout out to rick polo and jesse martin for putting this whole thing together <laughs> thank you thank you very much we appreciate it what made you what was the decision to kind of plug in and really go for it again i i wouldn't even say it was a conscious decision it just sort of started happening um uh Normally, we, you know, over the years, we've always bounced songs off of each other. We've always all written things and just kind of sent them to each other. And a lot of times we shoot each other down on all that stuff. Like Lee will send Jack and I five songs and we'll be like, one of them's OK, the rest we don't like. And then nothing ever comes of it. And somehow we all just started to like feel on the same page. All of a sudden we started sending each other songs and we were just all in love with everything we were writing which hasn't ever really happened even when we were younger it was a lot of like changing things and adapting things before we started to get excited about it and this was I think was the first time ever that we ha started writing a collection of songs that we were in love with from the very beginning and yeah oddly enough they all kind of had a theme of like dark creepy ghosty things <laughs> Um, and it might've had a lot to do with, you know, Lee moving back into his childhood home to help take care of his mother. And we were all feeling like the nostalgia from that. Peppy and Jack and I always played house shows in the very house that I'm now living again, that most of these songs were kind of perfected in. We always write about like homes and, and, uh, the spirits that live in them and all this stuff, but this was way more heavier towards that. This isn't going to be about like, um, the demons. That, this is about this, our past that we're going to give a big hug to. This is about the ghosts that we love. This is about owning our past rather than getting it out. The album will be out October 3rd and the EP probably before that, but we're going to celebrate that on Halloween and play a lot of the new songs there. 
So um, thirdclass.net, you'll find everything there. So if, if you don't mind younger kids listening, if you don't mind being a dinosaur and typing in www.thirdclass.net, then you can click on all the little icons and find your spot. Hey guys, it's Third Class. We're awesome. This, song, this song's called Happiness is My Favorite Thing. one is also going to be on the new album this is called oh i'm sorry you're you're uh, this this song is called it went like this and it goes like this <laughs> I don't remember why 
I sat down on the couch and watched and I began to cry I saw the big kids throwing tennis balls at you You were a student at one of the schools I happened to go to We played the keyboard making demo beats all night And all the notes that we played wrong were played